Okay, so we're going to talk about sewing and embroidery, okay? So these two things are actually made up of a, a different kind of um, art medium than uh, what we're used to, okay? So normally we're used to something that we draw with, all right? This is a little bit different because it can actually make something what's called utilitarian um, art. It's art that you can um, use. All right, uh, so here we, let's, let's go through a couple of things that are in this little booklet. You may probably pick it up as a paper, but it's really a booklet, okay? So sewing is a craft that involves stitching fabric together with a needle and thread by hand or with machine. All right, although it's a needle craft, it differs from knitting, crocheting, needlepoint, cross stitch, embroidery, and the like because it's not necessarily decorative. Okay, so a lot of these other ones tend to be decorative, okay, um, but it's more utilitarian. So what does utilitarian really mean? It means that it has a purpose, okay? Now a couple examples um, that I have. Now I've uh, done sewing with, uh, you know, sixth grade and different people for quite a bit. So, so what tends to happen is you're going to create something that is three-dimensional. Okay, now I know that a lot of times the sewing for most people are on the inside, but I have them be on the outside because I need to be able to see your stitches. Okay, so this is an example of a tree someone actually did. Um, this was a, they wanted to create it as like a donut, but it looks like a, yep, you got it. Oh, sorry, the other side. Okay, looks like a ladybug. Okay. Um, yeah, the other side doesn't look so good because there is a right side and a wrong side. All right. So let's kind of go through a couple of things for this because before we really could get into the unit, I've got to kind of go over a couple ground rules. Everything's stored for this unit in a bag, okay, your sewing bag. So you can actually get these sewing bags up by the section where all the supplies are, okay. You just borrow it. Um, make sure that you return it when you're done, okay. Know where the needle is at all times. Do not lose it. All right, so this is a part of your grade. So I would make sure you know where this is at all times, okay? Um, you need to request for a needle, all right? So over in the station, there are requests for needles. You need to read it and sign it, okay? I'm not gonna necessarily go over it, but you must sign it, okay? In order to not lose it, what I tend to tell people is pin it to your fabric, just like this, okay? All the time. You get up to go and get more fabric. Pin it. Okay? You get up to go to the bathroom. Pin it. You get up to do whatever. Pin it. Don't just leave it um, by itself. It needs to be attached to your fabric. Okay? Because a lot of times what happens is this needle and uh, not having anything on it will fall on the floor. And as you can tell, my floor is kind of busy, all right, uh, in, the, in its design. And it's hard to find this, all right. It says your needle must be returned at the end of, oh, no, it should be your project in order to gain all possible points. Do not hurt anyone or anything with the needle intentionally, okay. This is mean if you go up and you're like, I just feel like poking something. Do not do that, okay. Do not go and poke anyone else. Do not fool around with any of the fabric scissors or thread involved in this project okay and cut with the inside of the scissors so that's actually one of the um, important things that I want to kind of go over oh, these are kind of gross looking but just to let you know most times people will cut with the end because of the fabric being a little bit thicker I want you to open it up and really get the inside of the scissors like this and cut short little snips all right um, I'm gonna let my left-handed people know okay that this might be a little bit challenging all right so there are a couple left-handed scissors out there and you do the same thing they tend to be these swivel ones okay all right all that side let's start about the inside all right so first thing we're going to go over is the sewing part so there's two parts to this uh, unit the sewing and embroidery okay so sewing is the act of sewing basically it okay sewing can make something new or mend something that is broken okay there are two types of sewing there's hand and machine I do not have a machine okay a sewing machine so I actually teach hand all right um, for this unit you will lose hand all right so first thing we want to talk about is the open end of the needle so there's two points to this needle the pointy part and the part which we're having is called the eye so everyone take a minute and please write that in 
okay? The eye is where the thread goes, okay? Now, I do have different kinds of needles, um, meaning like they're different sizes, okay? So we start off with the thick ones because it's a good starter needle, okay? It's a good starter needle to start learning how to sew. Um, there are some people, yes, I know that I have lots of students who know how to sew, and that's fantastic. But for the practice, at least do with the starter one, okay? And then for your final project, if you would like to use a smaller needle, you absolutely can, okay? The ugly side with all the knots. So you're going to find that one of your sides is going to be the ugly side, okay? And one's going to be the nice clean side, okay? So this one is a the ugly side, okay? It means the, you know, basically called the wrong side. Why is it called the wrong side? It's called the wrong side because that's not what the side that we want to focus on, okay? So there's gonna be a right side where you want almost like the top of the paper, and we have like almost like the back of the paper, the wrong side, okay? If that's called the wrong side, what do you think the other side's called? Ooh, you're so good. The right side. You're like, that is so weird. I know. So that tends to be the pretty side. The pretty side that we see everything. Now, for example, this one right here, the wrong side is actually inside. Okay? Um, for this one, what I did was I actually cut out this and then I sewed everything on one side first and then I bound it together. Okay? Now, always add a knot to the end of your string and pull your thread all the way through. Okay? Make sure stitches are even and the same. All right, so we're gonna keep that in the back of our head, okay, because that's gonna help us um, when we're sewing. Now we're gonna go over four different stitches. Um, just to let you know that one of the stitches, I'm gonna kinda add a little bit here, is called the hemming stitch. So we're gonna add this here. Hemming stitch is very closely related to this one, okay, where it goes over. Only difference is, um, if we can imagine that this is a piece of fabric, instead of going over to the other side, it, it kind of goes out, okay, like this. Kind of like, just like the eyes are here, okay? But we're just going to practice these four. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go over this one because I feel like that one's not necessarily one we need to really kind of focus on, okay? How do we go about doing this? Okay. Um, what I think I need you guys to do is you're going to go over to the sewing um, area and you're going to get piece, two pieces of thread, okay? Now, how long do I want you to do? Well, here's the golden rule. You don't want to do something longer than your arm length, okay? That means from your armpit down to your thumbs, okay? Um, another measuring one you can do is the station where the actual... Uh, thread is, if you go across the whole table right there, okay, you cut it off there, that's as long as you need. Why am I saying that you only need this length? Because I've done this many, many, many times. If it's too long, it will not, okay? You will end up pulling it, and then next thing you know, it's going to be caught, and you don't want that, okay? All right, so how does this actually work out? And we're going to kind of go through, and I'll show you how this kind of works. So I'll step by step. It says, first we're going to draw on our fabric. Um, when you're coming up with an idea, you want to have probably two sides, okay? Unless you're doing um, a one-sided object, okay? So we're going to use black or white color pencil. Draw it on two pieces, and then we're going to cut out both pieces at the same time, okay? Um, remember to use large pieces for large sections and small scraps for small sections, okay? So if you look around in that um, sewing area, you're going to find that there are some big ones and there's some small. Please use the correct size. I don't want you taking a large piece and cutting a small little sliver out of it. That's wasteful. Okay? Cut them out together. Details. Alright, that's where we're right here. We're going to learn about a little bit of sewing and then we're going to come back to this section right here. Okay. So, hiccup in our plans, okay? So we're needing to get down to the part where we're gonna sew, all right? So first things first is we're gonna learn how to do a knot. Now just so you know, I'm gonna come up really close. Oh, can you see me? There we go, all right? You can do a knot by looping around, coming through, pulling one, We're going to do it again. Take your thing, go through the loop, okay, 
two, okay? Now for this, we're just doing a double knot, all right? Now, there is another way to do a knot. Now I'm gonna show you, I'll cut this one off, okay? Um, this is not necessarily how you have to do it, but it's a way you can, okay? I licked my finger just so you know. Loop around, pinch, twist. Okay, see that? See how it's twisted? I'm gonna take my finger, pinch the twist, okay? So it looks like I'm, I'm squeezing it, okay? All right, see how that's coming out the middle? It's all nice in there, I'm holding the twist. I'm gonna pull this, lightly tug, and I'm gonna feel a little bit of a knot. When I feel the knot in there, I'm gonna let go. Double knotted, isn't that cool? You're like, what should I get? Okay, so this is kinda neat because this can actually come out. All right, ready? Twist, Met around, twist, see? Take your middle finger, hold that twist. Pull, you're gonna feel it inside. There, and it looks messy, but it's okay, because guess what? When it's on the wrong side, no one knows. The other side, now traditionally, I do double up regular thread, but as you can tell, this is not regular thread, it's much thicker, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, you know, kinda lick it, Mwah. Okay, twist it. Take the eye of our needle, put it through. All right, now I, um, it is possible that you could leave a little bit of this leaving out, but it might fall. So for about one finger length, you want a short string and a long string, okay? So the short one is just to give you enough so you can tie at the end. All right. Okay, double knot on one end, just single knot. Now why do we want a single knot on here? Oh, you're so good. Yes, in case you make a mistake, you can unknot it. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to do the running stitch, and we're gonna do about five stitches. All right, so running stitch is we come through, and it's gonna look like little feet. Go back in one side, back through that side. It looks like little feet. Stay on the side that we just came out. Up. Down. Notice I'm not flipping anything over. If I went into the back, I'm coming up through the back. All right. So let's go through. Now, one thing that you kind of want to make sure is that your stitches are kind of even. All right. Oh, I didn't. I was not paying attention. Okay. You get five stitches in, that's perfect. If you can get four, that's fine, okay. So this is a running stitch, okay? Now, by the way, if I ever go too fast, stop the video and just pause. Now, next one we're gonna do is what's called the back stitch. It's almost like a running stitch, but you end up going back home, okay? You're like, what does that mean? All right, so we're gonna pretend then we're gonna do a running stitch, okay? We know we come up and down, up and down, up and down, okay? So this one, when I come up, instead of going forward like this, I'm actually gonna go back to that last one. Forward, back. This is so calming, forward, back. All right, so we can get squeeze one more in. Forward, back. All right, so far so good, right? Now you can do quite a bit with these. Um, if you need to do long stitch, you could do long stitches, you could do short stitches, um, lots of different things that you can do with this. Now the next one we're gonna do is called an overstitch. This is one of the stitches, by the way, you can use to close to of your um, fabrics together, okay? Now, see how notice it's ugly on the back? Okay, so that's the wrong side. Right side looks nice, wrong side looks awful, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our string and we're just gonna go whoosh, straight up. Okay. Now, an overstitch is exactly that. We're gonna go over and over. 
pretty simple, correct? Yeah, this is nice. All right, let's do five stitches and one more. So this is one way you can close, all right? Um, just so you're aware, you need to keep them kind of close because what happens is if they're too far apart, check this out, okay? This one was too far apart and what happened was they overstuffed it and you can peek through it, okay? These are very close stitches, okay? Not overstuffed, can't see the inside. These are very close together, not overstuffed, can't see the inside. This is, oh my God, these are awesome. They are so tight together, perfect, okay? Now this one, um, looks good from the front, but when you go to the other side, look what happened. They missed a spot, okay? And it looks very messy in the back, all right? So you gotta just take your time. All right, so we have our overstitch, all right? Let's go to our, our next one. Now this next one's a little bit more challenging, okay? Um, not everyone chooses to do this one because they're like, I get confused. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's basically an overstitch with a twist, okay? So we're gonna do an overstitch, but instead of closing it, we're gonna go through the loop, okay? Around, over, same motion, through the loop. Around, through the loop. Now, why would some people um, go for this stitch rather the other one? It's because it creates this long line on the side and it gives it like a fancy look. Ooh, fancy's good, right? through the loop. And we're gonna do one more. Through the loop, thank you. All right, running stitch, which by the way, you can use longer, shorter stitches, depending on if it's being decorative or if you're sewing something, okay? Back stitch, okay? Over stitch, which by the way, you can do it on pieces of fabric that you need to add on. This one was, although used a running stitch, okay? These were kind of do what's called a hemming stitch, which is kind of like an overstitch. It's like the overstitch's cousin. There you go. Let's work that, okay? And then we have the blanket stitch, okay? So you have a nice little edge on the end, okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to end this, all right? Now, ending, as you can kind of see, it loops under something else, okay? You either make the loop or you go under something else. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go under something else. We're gonna go under a stitch. So find a stitch that's close, okay? And all I'm gonna do is, see how this is creating a loop? I'm gonna go through it to make a little knot there. And I'm gonna go under again, just because I tend to do, I love double knots, okay? Just wanna make a double knot, okay? When you're done, we're just gonna clip this off. And that's that, okay? Now, where do we are in this? Okay, so on all the small details first. Okay, based on what we just learned, okay, what are small details? Small details, eyes. Um, if you got something that needs to be attached on, if we have additional colors, um, although this tooth is a different one, I'm gonna talk to you about that one, okay? Uh, here, we have that, okay? Um, the way they did these little spots, those are additional, okay? So we'd use our skills here, okay? Don't glue tape or draw on any details. Okay, first of all, as we can kind of see, this one was drawn on, looks tacky, right? Yeah, the only time you wanna draw on something is because you're trying to create an outline, okay? Um, embroider any, everything you need to know. Embroidery. What is embroidery? That is what you're gonna do with the next string, okay? Okay, so let's figure out what embroidery is. Let's go in, I want you to make your double knot at the end. Now remember, there's two different ways. Doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you get a double knot, okay? This one end, Mwah! Uh-oh, see what happens with the needle? It just disappears, okay? I'm gonna add that on again. Remember, double knot at one end, in, 
and close. Okay, remember I should be able to get that out. What is embroidery? Because we got to this point. It said, okay, we can draw on the fabric, cut out the fabric, both at the same times. Okay. Um, then we're going to sew everything we need to know on one side. So this is the one side. I'm going to take my one back and I'm going to draw, like, sew on everything I need. I need to embroider everything I need to do. Oh, what's embroidery? Let's flip it over. Okay. Here we are. Embroidery is decorative stitching or embellishment of a piece of fabric. An embellishment, okay, ooh, I ran out of time, is a supply that's not the main fabric or tools, okay, such as a button, bead, braided yarn, or decorative stitches, okay? So what we're going to do for the rest of this is I actually want you to try some of these decorative stitches, okay? The one I'm going to show you is a French knot. Okay, because I feel like that one's kind of a useful one. And then I want you to go in and I want you to try some of these, okay? At least two, all right, in the space below. All right, so French knot, um, that's one that I love doing. It's either super hard or super easy. Dude, by the way, it's super easy. Okay, so we're going to come from the wrong side to the right side, okay? All the way up. There we go. Okay, notice I pulled through. Okay, see how my string is coming to the left and my needle is coming from the right. Okay, we're kind of going the same direction. What you're going to do is you're going to loop it. One, two, three. Okay, hold it back tight. And then we're going to carefully sew right back down. Now, don't pull too hard. Pull nice and light until you see a little knot left. Okay, that's a French knot. Okay, let's do it again. String goes to the left. The needle comes in from the right. One, two, three. Okay, slide it. Put it right back where you came out of. It doesn't have to go in the exact spot. Right next to it, it's just fine. Pull, 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 pull. Not too hard. And then stop when you see a knot. All right. So that's a French knot. Okay, so somehow uh, we are doing just great, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a few minutes, okay? And I want you to do two other stitches, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? I just want you to see that you can do decorative things with your sewing. So for example, what's, what's a fun one? Cross stitch, be able to create crosses. Oh, that's cool, I can do that, okay? So... And by the way, remember, this is the ones that you get to choose, okay? All right, so let me see if I can do a three cross stitch. And all I'm doing is I'm looking at it, trying to figure it out. Okay, so I got to create crosses. Okay. Cross. Ugh. There we are. Ready? Oh, how special is that? You're like, of course it is special. Okay, so embroidery is decorative, okay? Could I put a button on here? Sure, that would be decorative. Could I stick some beads on here? Sure, I totally could put a bead right onto this and sew this in, okay? But as you can see, sewing kind of is like basic decorative, okay? All right, so do one more, okay? Let's go back. Let's let's figure out. Let's let's get through the rest of this. Plan it out. Cut your your fabric. Sew on the stuff that you need to. Add your decorative sewing on it. Okay. Um. A lot of times the decorative sewing tends to be in different colors. Just to let you know. All right. So we got all that. Now, how do we get this all together? Sew both sides together. If you're stuffing it, leave a small gap to open. To put the stuffing in. Okay. So basically what happened here is this person sewed everything on the front first, okay? They did do embroidery, actually. This is decorative, this tooth. They went back and forth to fill it in, okay? That was decorative. Now this knot right here, not so cool. Could they have probably tied this inside? Yes, that probably would have been better, okay? And then what they did was when they were done, they started sewing all the way through. I believe what happened is they probably got to this point, stuffed it, 
Okay. And then either forgot that it wasn't pinned, or maybe they just didn't sew it closed. Okay. This one. Knot is here. Sewed all the way around. Stopped there. Stuffed it. Continued. Okay. Well, that's pretty much it with sewing. Okay. Now, there are a couple of different things that you can do with this. So, I would check out the different um, practice. When you are done with this, okay, this is all finished. I'm going to be looking for two ending knots on the back of this. Four st sewing stitches, okay, so the four that I, I did. And three, one being the French knot, okay, so you got two more decorative stitches, okay, there we go, there we are, okay, this is to get stapled into your sketchbook, okay, this can get taped, you put a little tape here, a little tape here, tape it into your, your sketchbook, staple that in, and this is the whole unit, okay, and that is it for sewing, by the way, if any of this is a little bit too much, you can look at YouTube. And let me tell you, they do have whole tutorials on how to sew certain things. So if you're like not sure about making the focus with this, it's absolutely fine to check it out, okay? All right, that's it. Ooh, one more thing. Don't forget, don't lose this needle, okay? When you're not using it, pin it into your fabric, okay? And you must return it at the end of your project.